All right, so welcome. My name is Erin. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the student recruitment officer at the UBC Vancouver campus. I'd like to acknowledge the land that UBC has built its Vancouver campus on, which we work, learn, connect, and innovate is the unceded ancestral and traditional territory of the Musqueam peoples. Uh, today, we're going to talk all about a little bit about UBC engineering very quickly, and then we'll jump into a Q&A period so that you can get all of your questions answered, which you'll be able to ask using the chat today. So to continue with our presentation, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Kyle. Thank you, Erin. It's <laughs> great to be connecting with everyone this evening or whichever time zone you're, you're joining from. My name is Kyle Watson. I'm an engineering academic advisor on UBC's Vancouver campus. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm really excited to be here with you this evening. I'd also like to acknowledge that UBC's Okanagan campus is situated on the territory of the Silks Okanagan Nation and their people. And I'd like to acknowledge the traditional territory land and caretakers from which you are joining from today. As Aaron mentioned, today's presentation, we are gonna be covering some details about UBC Engineering, our two wonderful campuses and the programs that are offered. But the main purpose of today's session is to answer your last minute questions that you have before submitting your application, or maybe you've already submitted your application and you've got some questions here moving forward. We have two superstars, current UBC engineering students that are here today as well, one from each campus, and they'll be available for questions about student experiences and, uh, and some exciting engagement later on in the presentation. So stick around throughout, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So even if you know other people who work as engineers, or maybe you have an idea of all the possibilities that could come with life beyond uh, an undergraduate degree in engineering, or maybe you aren't aware of the, the possibilities that are that are there, the first thing you're gonna be starting with is, is a, a undergraduate degree in engineering. And what's important to know for UBC engineering is our degree is called a Bachelor of Applied Science. Across Canada, there's no standard. Some universities offer a Bachelor of Degree in Engineering, or they offer a Bachelor Degree in Science within Engineering. Ours is the Bachelor of Applied Science. That is the engineering degree you would pursue at UBC and something that uh, can be helpful to know when you're choosing your selections on your application. At UBC, we are one application and one degree with two world-class campuses to choose from. We have the Vancouver campus and the Okanagan campus. What's really cool about UBC Engineering, we're actually a faculty that's spread across both of those campuses. So when you are selecting your choices on your application, uh, you may have the opportunity to, uh, you do have the opportunity to select two choices. Make sure you're choosing your first choice in the priority of your, your preferences, but there are two campuses, both offering UBC engineering. So if we jump a little bit closer into the degrees or programs that are offered when you apply to UBC, you're applying to the Bachelor of Applied Science. You're applying for that engineering degree. At UBC, we have a foundational first year program, whether you're on the Vancouver campus or the Okanagan campus, you're taking that foundational first year, focusing on math, chemistry, physics, making sure we're getting ready for success throughout the degree. After your first year or completing a minimum number of credits within first year, you get the chance to choose or, or uh, declare your specialization. This is also referred to as a major um, or some cases a program on the Okanagan campus. We have these four specializations to choose from, civil, electrical, manufacturing, and mechanical engineering. On the Okanagan campus, we have a bit of a luxury because we are a smaller campus. There's no cap, so students are able to simply declare their first choice. On the Vancouver campus, there are 14 specializations to choose from. Again, a specialization is also referred to as a major at UBC in engineering. After you've finished first year, Typically, it happens uh, in, in the spring between that March to, to May timeline. You're going to be choosing your, your specializations. On the Vancouver campus, you're going to rank your, your preference. So if your first choice and uh, an ultimate interest is in, say, environmental engineering, you list that first and, um, and rank them accordingly. But we really encourage our engineering students to start on the campus they plan to finish on. If you're really passionate about 
chemical engineering and it's not on the Okanagan campus, me as an Okanagan advisor, I'm not going to take offense to that. We want you to pursue the program of your choice. So follow the campus that offers that, that program. If you're looking to select based on campus life or your life outside the classroom, then you might factor in which campus you're choosing. But it's important to know the programs that are offered from both campuses within engineering. There's a lot to look forward to when you are looking ahead at your UBC engineering academic journey. Throughout your degree, you're going to be able to dabble in many experiences. Our students are going to be chatting about this later on and able to ask some questions, but I'm going to kick it back over to my colleague Aaron to chat a little bit more about the exciting stuff you have to look forward to with a UBC engineering degree. So UBC Engineering really fosters community. Right from the time you enter UBC Engineering, you'll have support systems like our first year orientations, have the opportunity to get involved with so many different clubs, which is a great way to connect with your peers. And there's also lots of clubs that we have specific to equity, diversity and inclusion, which is really important to us at UBC. And so you can get involved in a club like Women in Engineering, you can get involved in a club like Gears for Queers, the National Society for Black Engineers, so you can really find your community with other students like yourself at UBC. There are also so many other ways to find your community at such a big university like UBC as well. So we have design teams or we have more than 400 campus wide clubs that you can get connected with. At the Vancouver campus, there are over 30 design teams that enable students to work in teams, explore your interests and gain hands on experience right from your very first year. These teams often go and compete internationally. Um, one of our teams right now, Third Quadrant Design, is actually building a new space, a net zero carbon space right on campus. So they get to do a lot of really amazing things um, as a student in one of these teams. And at the Okanagan campus, there's also so many ways to expand your network. So there's additional teams that you can get involved in. As, as well as some additional ways to connect with other engineers or other students like yourself. Now, later on in your degree, you can also customize your studies further by choosing to pursue a minor. So Kyle referred to those majors or those specializations, which would be your engineering program that you're studying, but you can also choose a minor if that's something that you're interested in, which would be a secondary area of study. This is not a requirement at all, but it will allow you to have that secondary focus if it's something that you're interested in. You can see the listed minors available at both campuses on the screen here. We also have the dual degree of the Bachelor of Arts, the Vancouver campus. Now, with all of these, you don't have to choose that right away. You would actually come in and complete at least the first year of your program before deciding on if you want to do a minor or a dual degree. We also have the opportunity to give you paid work experience through our co-op program, which again you can apply into at the beginning of second or third year. So no decisions that you need to make just yet. There's also a ton of opportunities to go abroad. So if you want to work, study, or research abroad, a lot of students will do this through our Go Global program or the coordinated international experience that allows you to study at some of the top engineering institutions from around the world. So those are, again, just a few pieces that you can kind of customize your degree as you move throughout the program. Now, from the very start of your degree, you'll be exposed to hands-on design projects where you work in teams with other first-year students. You'll also have courses year after year that continue to build on those project based team learning experiences culminating in your final year with your capstone design project where you and your peers will work with industry partners to solve real life problems. Now this capstone project is a highlight of many of our students degree because you're working on super cool projects that are actually things that you might work on in industry and in fact many of our students get hired from their capstone project to continue work or similar work to that after they graduate. Research is also something that a lot of students might be interested in. So if you're interested in getting involved in research, again, it's something that you could get involved right from the start or later on in your degree. And the really like amazing thing of UBC Engineering is that you get to choose that and you get to kind of make those decisions of when you want to get involved in all of those different aspects. 
So you can get paid research experience. You can do it on your own with support from clubs like the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Club. Um, you can volunteer in labs. There's tons of ways to kind of get involved in research if that's something that you're interested in doing. So that's really a quick highlight of, again, a reminder of UBC Engineering that we have two campuses that you can put two choices on your application. And if you're really interested in engineering, you may want to put engineering at the Vancouver campus as one choice and at the Okanagan as a second choice. So that's a great option for you to consider on your application. Uh, you can see that there's lots more for you to get involved in, but all that you're doing on the application right now is simply applying to the Bachelor of Applied Science, which is our engineering degree at UBC. So we're here to answer all of the other questions you have. You're welcome to start using the chat to answer, to ask us those questions, because we're going to open up the rest of today's session for Q&A. There were some questions submitted in advance, so we will try to get to some of those as well. Um, but while you think of those questions that you'd like to ask, I'm going to introduce our two students here with us today so that they can let us know more about themselves, their own experiences, and what they love about UBC Engineering. So John B, I'll get you to go first. Um, thank you, Erin. I'm really excited to be here with you guys today. Hi everyone, my name is John Lee. I'm in my second year at, in civil engineering at UBC Vancouver campus. Um, so this year I'm involved in women in engineering as the VP communication engagement, the Canadian Society for Civil Engineers as an event coordinator, where as a team, we just coordinate and present ourselves uh, with the networking events. And I'm also a part of Engineering Undergraduate Society as a second year student. And the reason I chose UBC Engineering is because of the variety of programs, the 14 programs that you just that you guys just saw and the beautiful Vancouver campus. Awesome, thanks so much. And Sienna, if you would like to share. Hi everyone, my name is Sienna. I am a second year on the Okanagan campus and I'm studying mechanical engineering with a biomedical option. Um, some of the things that I'm involved with on campus are I'm on the women's varsity soccer team, and I'm also a part of the Society of Scholars. And other than that, I volunteer a bunch with Go Eng Girl, which basically just kind of helps girls who want to come into engineering answer their questions from local high schools they come to campus. And then I also recently have become involved with UBCO iGEM, which is like a synthetic biology kind of club and you work with that sort of stuff in labs. Awesome, thanks so much for sharing. All right, so I see some questions jumping in already. We're gonna start to answer those. Um, so the first question is specifically about uh, kind of what is workload like in your first year? Is it possible for students to be a varsity athlete as well as a first year engineering? engineer? The answer is definitely yes, and we do have varsity athletes all the time. We have advisors that will work with you to plan out your schedule. In some cases, it may mean extending your first year so that you are taking a lighter course load for that particular scenario, but depending on what sport you're with um, will depend on what that looks like, like how long does your season go, all of that sort of stuff. John V, do you want to talk a little bit about what the kind of course load was like for you in first year and how you managed your time? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Erin. Um, so in my first year, I had a full course load without the varsity STT, a varsity standard timetable. And so I had six courses in my first year and seven in my second year. But for the students who are who play for the varsity athletes, it's, it's a little less. So I think for myself, I kind of made timetables way before the school started in September when I decided which course I want to take. So I think uh, managing and making a schedule in my first year before 7 September, that's when the classes began. It really helped me to manage my workload during the eight months. Yeah. Sienna, do you want to add anything else about kind of what the workload was like for you in first year and how you managed it? Um, the workload for me in first year, I found pretty manageable. I did take a reduced course load just because um, I am on the women's soccer team. And so that's also a huge commitment outside of engineering. But um, yeah, instead of taking the traditional course load, I took four courses in my first semester when we're in season. 
and then I took five in second semester and I also made use of the fact that you can take summer courses and so that's always an option for student athletes but I didn't find the course load too overwhelming but I also took a bunch of AP courses in high school which I found really helped. Perfect so definitely possible to be a varsity athlete and a first year student. Awesome. All right, there's a few questions about kind of what is the admission requirements? Um, what courses do you recommend taking in high school? So I am gonna put in the link right now for our requirements. So that is the general wowu.ubc.ca website. You can find out what your admission requirements are. Now, I will say that for UBC engineering, we unfortunately don't have a specific grade that you need to meet. Um, it is going to be competitive based on grades, but because we're looking at your personal profile, your overall academic average, and your core academic average, we're looking at so many pieces that we can't say, like, if you meet this grade, you're in, because we're looking at so like such a holistic view of you that we don't really have a way to kind of answer that. So unfortunately, I can't give you an exact mark that you need, um, but you can look at the requirements website to see everything you need. So that would include a four IB students, four AP students, um, kind of what that will look like. Now, admission requirements to both campuses are a little bit different. So there is a question about, you know, does it require the same marks? Maybe you're wondering, do we require the same courses and things like that as well? So we do encourage you to look at the website because there, you are able to click the tab for Vancouver and for Okanagan. Um, as Kyle was mentioning for the second year placement piece that there's no caps on the Okanagan campus just because they are a smaller campus and do have a little bit more capacity for students that you may find that some of the admission averages are also just a little bit different um, because of the available seats for students at our campuses are both a little bit different. So if you really want to get into engineering, my recommendation would always be to apply for engineering at both campuses because that will give you more options to study UBC at UBC engineering. But again, you should plan to complete your degree at whichever campus you are starting at. So it is a little bit more difficult to try and transfer between campuses uh, if that's something that you're thinking of. Um, but you can definitely talk to an advisor or you can contact Kyle or myself if you have really specific questions about that after today. Um, so I think I've answered a bunch of, there was a bunch of questions about requirements, so check out that website. We also have a bunch of admission uh, videos that we've done before. So a couple weeks ago, we did one about the application. We really dove deep into the requirements, and we have one from our online open house. So you can check out those recordings as well. All right, I think, Kyle, correct me if I've missed anything, but I think the next one would be the question about, is it possible to minor in music performance while majoring in engineering? So for that, at the Vancouver campus um, and the Okanagan campus, you can do a minor in art. So it could be part of the minor arts, depending on what you're looking at. Um, I would recommend, I know at the Vancouver campus, there's a lot of options to do different types of music minors so I would recommend talking with our arts advisors to learn a little bit more about what that would entail for you a minor is typically going to add um, at least about a semester maybe a year's worth of classes again it depends if you're taking courses in the summer as well but it will add some time to your degree but if you're really passionate about music and learning more about music it's possible that you could do that as a minor at the Vancouver campus Kyle do you want to mention anything more about the Okanagan campus with that yeah thanks Erin minors are going to be additional courses taking from a different faculty that will add time onto your degree as Erin covered there the arts minor is usually going to be a little bit less commitment for the Okanagan campus specifically that's just going to add on one extra winter semester uh, to your degree completion timeline or depending on how many summer courses you look to to cram in there if that's your your prerogative the arts minor is probably the most flexible one when compared to all other minors in terms of choosing your own adventure. It's sort of, here's the minimum number of credits you have to complete, go ahead and choose any arts course. Whereas a computer science minor, for example, it's a little bit more specific. You have to complete four of the following six courses, for example, it's a little more strict. So arts is, is actually was just added to the Okanagan campus 
as a minor um, for this past year. We're super excited about it, super flexible for these engineering students that also want to be taking um, some classes really anywhere within the arts. This is diving into music related courses, but some students are jumping into more um, geography arts type courses. There's there's just a lot of possibility for it. And it just allows that student who wants to take a little bit of time studying outside of engineering topics, but earn a credential that could help them with maybe a job application or applying to grad school, whatever their goals are moving forward. So that's a really, really good question that, um, that came through there. I'm looking at another question, if I'm correct, skimming through the admissions based ones. Again, our you.ubc.ca website is so detailed. You can click through the filters. I'm a Canadian high school student from the province of Ontario taking IB courses. What do I need to complete and what might I get credit for moving forward? That site is super, super helpful. Uh, there's a good question that came in through here um, for... Oh, I just skimmed over it now. Is there any peer mentoring possibilities at UBC? And I'm paraphrasing the um, the exact specifics of the words, but yes, there are mentorship programs. So within UBC engineering, we have peer mentor programs, but there's also peer mentors offered from UBC in general. The offices that offer both programs from each campus have potentially different titles, but in these mentorship programs, you can be hearing from engineering students who lived what you lived through in year one and are now currently maybe in year two or three, and they can chat about specific courses that you completed and how they survived year one, so to speak. We also have peer mentors that just maybe want to help you with your approach to adjusting to life on campus, living in UBC housing or eating UBC food or adjusting to that, that transition. Peer mentors are a super cool program that are offered. We also have mentorship programs on both campuses specific to academics. If you're looking for subject tutors or if you're looking for a learning strategist to help with organizing your time management and just learning how to learn better at, at university, there's so many supports that are available. If you're struggling with um, stress and anxiety and the mental health, or if you're needing to be more active and you wanna join, maybe you're not going all the way at the varsity athlete level, but you wanna join a competitive club or an intramural or join a club that's related to your personal interest. There's so many support networks that are available, not just on the academic side, but on the social side, the student experience side. There's a lot of ways to find for sure your community and, and build that network, but build that support system. Because if you are moving to a new town or a new province or a new country, it can be quite stressful showing up on campus for that, for that first time and relearning how to make friends again and how to find your class and how to get to lunch on time before your next lab and there's a lot to go on but i'll let i'll let our students chat more about that student experience piece uh, as well but yes we have peer mentors that are available in addition to many other supports um, essentially when you have a question i need help with this there's a team at ubc that's that's there to assist you um, and just to add to that, so we do have our UBC Engineering Ambassadors, John Fee is one of them. Um, so I will add that link. So if you're a high school student looking for kind of mentorship from a current student right now, we have students from both campuses that you can start a chat with online. You can ask them questions about their experiences. They'll list in their bio, whether they've been in co-op or on certain design teams or things like that. So you can check in with them. It's not an official mentorship program, but it is an option to kind of get that mentorship right now while you're still in high school. And, you know, throughout over the next year as you're deciding where you may want to study and things like that. So um, I did have a question to ask for uh, John V. Uh, so there was a question about um, is calculus a required course? So calculus is not required for admission. We do often recommend that. John V, did you take calculus and did you feel like it helped you out during first year or did you feel like you struggled if you didn't take it? Um, so I, I, my curriculum was Indian curriculum. It's called CBSC. So I had calculus in my high school, but I think um, it kind of helped me a little bit to 
adjust to the calculus, which is in universe, the university level calculus. But I think it's we for the first year, everything is just from the beginning. So you kind of just learn from its baby steps. You kind of learn from the beginning in the university. So if you have calculus in high school, it helps a little bit. But if you don't have it, it's not a big deal. You can still study calculus in university. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Um, there's another question about, are there any engineering volunteer club courses that UBC offers to current secondary school students? So there's not anything official that UBC engineering has per se. We do have events like this. We'll have on-campus events as well. We had our open houses earlier this summer. A lot of those are more for you to learn more about us. But I am going to share a link to our Gearing Up program. So Gearing Up uh, has camps for high school students. It has programs that run for high school students. Um, it also has a volunteer program that runs throughout the year and in the summer that you can be a volunteer leader. So if you are in the Vancouver or the Kelowna area, you can also volunteer with Gearing Up to get more connected with Applied Science and UBC Engineering. Um, and that's a really great volunteer opportunity to look into. So I will mention that. Um, also keep an eye out for any kind of like events happening that you can kind of get involved with to get more connected. So that's a great opportunity. Some of our design teams will also host like events and things like that. So I recommend following their uh, their social media to see what's going on, to see if they're posting anything. Um, and that also reminds me, going back to that mentorship question, I know that the Women in Engineering Club at the Vancouver campus just launched their high school mentorship program. So go follow Women in Engineering at the Vancouver campus. Um, and I know they have all of their information on their social media, or you can check out uh, the, uh, I don't think it's on their website. I think it's all through their Instagram page. So go to search Women in Engineering Vancouver Instagram uh, on Instagram. I'll try and find that link for you. And if any women students uh, or uh, non-binary or gender fluid students are here today that would like to join that mentorship program, I know that that's launching, launching very soon for high school students. Um, Sienna, a question for you. There was a question, how many hours do you spend on school per week on average? So maybe you can talk a little bit about kind of like how you divide your time between courses, between uh, your other activities that you're involved in and kind of what that looks like for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, at least for me, I try to balance out everything that I'm doing pretty equally like between spending time with friends and then time with the soccer team and then time within my courses in engineering I find that if you have gone throughout high school and you really know how you learn best th then you can make use of your time in lectures to so then you don't have to spend quite as much time reviewing um, I find that a lot of people who are just sitting in class and they're not they're just kind of copying down the notes. They don't really have a process for how they're learning. At least my friends who kind of do that, they have to spend a lot more time reviewing. Um, I'd say outside of class itself, I spend anywhere from like two to four hours a day kind of doing my own work, getting assignments done, lab reports done. Um, I find that studying in groups is really beneficial because the moment you have a question, someone else might be able to answer it. And then you're not st spending like hours trying to figure it out or searching YouTube and all those sorts of things. Um, and you can get it answered really quickly and you don't also have to wait for your process office hours to come around. So that's kind of how I balance out my time, just kind of making the best use of my time in class. Awesome, thanks. A couple more kind of admission-based questions came in, so I'm going to try and answer those quickly. Um, so one question is, are intern marks looked at during uh, first round offers of admission? So UBC typically looks at your final grades when we assess you for admission. So it would be whatever you've completed up until that point when you are being assessed. So for first round offers, it's typically whatever you completed during your grade 11 year. Um, for regular offers of admission that would happen uh, typically closer to kind of February, March, uh, that would be looking at whatever you completed in grade 11 and your first term of grade 12. If you are in a full year long school though, uh, UBC may look at your interim marks for that. 
or if you are a post-secondary student applying through the first round offer, we'll look at your interim marks as well. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea. Again, it depends on your academic history of exactly what UBC is going to look at. Um, but you can, uh, again, see all that info in some of our past recordings about admission specifically. Hopefully that answers. Another question is, if three students from a provincial high school, an IB program, and an AP program have the same average GPA and similar extracurricular, does the IB or AP program experience provide any advantage for admission? I feel like I'm about to answer a joke for that. Three people walk into <laughs> a place. Anyways, uh, that's a great question. We get that sort of question all the time. UBC's admission is comparative. So we are going to compare students against each other. Typically, what I want to say is, you know, if you're looking at students that have the same grades and they have the same curriculum, like extracurricular experiences, and they talked about that in an equal way on the personal profile, because obviously you can have tons of experience, but if you don't highlight that well on the personal profile, it may not show as well. If you're going to have the same grades and the same kind of personal profile score that we give you, we're not going to just say that one of those students is admitted because, oh, we've met our seats and, and not admit those other two students that are the exact same in our eyes. Typically, we're going to admit all of those students. There's not a specific number that we get to that we completely cut off from failing. So it's not like we get to 100 students and that's it, right? We're going to be flexible in our numbers with how our admission process works. So if you're going to be relatively identical to a different student, as long as you've presented yourself in the same way on the personal profile, which that can be harder to judge between like yourself and a friend of if you've done that. But in admission eyes, if we're looking at someone that's similar, that we're not going to just admit one person and not admit the other. But again, comes down to how you've presented yourself in your personal profile what all of those grades are, what all of the courses you've taken are. When we look at IB and AP, again, we're going to look at your grades related to that. UBC does consider a few extra things. So the breadth of courses that you've taken, have you taken courses outside of engineering, like option courses and things like that. The depth of your courses, so have you taken a lot of courses related to engineering, um, and the rigor of your courses. So have you taken honors, AP, IB, things like that. So we will consider that, but that's not necessarily to say that a student that has the same grades or better grades is going to be at a disadvantage. We also look at what school you're coming from. If your school doesn't offer AP, IB, uh, or honors courses, you're not going to be at a disadvantage either. So we look at so many different things, and I just really want to highlight the holistic admission process. As long as you are giving us all of the information that you can, then we're going to do our best to ensure that if you are admissible, that you would be admitted. So we're kind of looking at all of those pieces all together in a very, very holistic manner and not looking at just picking and choosing like bits and pieces of that. So hopefully that helps. Um, and again, we are looking at grade 11 and grade 12 marks for admission. We're looking at all of the courses you've completed, not just required courses. The required courses are kind of like a checklist. And then we look at all of those courses that would be uh, that you have taken in grade 11 and grade 12 levels. Um, if you are, there's a question about being an international student completing a course through the Ontario Virtual High School. How do you indicate that? Uh, so when it asks on your application for which uh, high schools you've attended, just make sure that you're indicating the Ontario Virtual High School as one of those schools that you've attended, and that will cover your basis for that. So you are responsible for providing your entire academic history to us. Make sure you're listing all of those schools that you've taken courses at, and that should cover that. Um, we've already answered the question about mentorship programs. Kyle, I'll get you to answer this question because I've been talking for a while. How many minors can someone take at the Okanagan campus along with engineering? That is a great question, Erin. Currently on the Okanagan campus, we offer three different minors to choose from, a minor in arts, 
minor in management or a minor in computer science. I say or because our engineering students are only allowed to pursue one minor. Your engineering degree, if you're going as fast as you can, taking as many courses as you can on the Okanagan campus, that's so going to be six courses per winter term, which would take you four years to complete your degree. A lot of our students like to spread their degree out to over five years. If you're a varsity athlete like Sienna, you're taking four courses per term and you might be adding in courses in the summertime, but it's extending that degree out. When you add a minor on there, that's an extra year. We're adding two minors on there. It's just it's just a lot. We want our engineers to primarily focus on engineering first. That's your passion. If you're finding yourself being drawn towards two art subjects and engineering secondary, maybe engineering isn't isn't your first choice. But if engineering is number one and you're torn between between two on the Okanagan campus, you can you can only choose one minor. Is that the same case for Vancouver minors as well, Aaron? Yeah, yeah one, one minor to choose from. We also have options that are available, um, not to go too far off the mark here, but an option. When you get to your fourth year in UBC engineering, you have a lot of flexibility on your elective courses to choose from. Choosing design and technical electives, you have an approved list that you get to select from. Uh, an option is sort of curating that, that list, but on the Okanagan campus, for example, you can be a mechanical engineer like Sienna and pursue a biomedical, um, an, an option in biomedical engineering, which she is also doing. And that is just sort of curating your, your fourth year selections along the way. Um, but typically you only are allowed to choose one of those, one minor, one option. You can do one minor and one option, but uh, you can't do two minors or two, two options. We had another question come through um, the, the chat here. Uh, what is a design team and can any engineering student at UBC join? That is a great question for, for design teams. You're typically gonna be limited to the design team offered for your campus. You'd stick to your campus, but I'm gonna kick it over to Sienna to provide some insight to UBC engineering design teams on the Okanagan campus. They offer the, refer to them as engineering engineering clubs as as well. Uh, but Sienna, would you like to share some info on that? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different um, clubs here on the Okanagan campus. There's um, the Concrete Toboggan Club, which they go to, uh, I'm not sure if it's international or just within Canada, they go to a huge competition. And then one of the things that I've become um, involved in recently is UBCO iGEM. So that stands for internationally genetically engineered machine and so it's a combination of like students from all different majors and most recently they went to Paris and competed in an international competition and won a gold medal which is super cool and they're working with synthetic biology so that's another club that's kind of anyone from any major can become involved in and then there's like 3D printing club there's there's so many I could even possibly know all of them off the top of my head but they're super easy to become involved in most of the time through their Instagram pages is where you kind of find out about them the most, that and the club fair that happens every year. And so through their Instagram pages, you kind of find out when they're accepting new members or they're having kind of general meetings and you go attend those and then you find out your next steps. And yeah, no, they're super fun to become involved in and you meet a lot of great people. Awesome. Um, I'm, I'm going to add in. Oh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just to add in a little bit about the Vancouver campus. So there are around 32 design teams, uh, which are divided between if you want to go into chemical and biological, if you want to learn more about that. So there are those design teams and there are design teams for civil engineering students. These are basically a community, a group of people working, having a hands on experience, making cars for Formula One and competing in with other schools. A lot of schools go to the United States to compete, such as the Formula One usually goes to Massachusetts, I think Boston to compete with the MIT students, which is really cool. I think that is a really good experience to have uh, if you are a part of a design team. Yeah. Perfect. Um, another question to kind of about the student experience. So uh, John V, I'm gonna get you to start with this one. So there's a question about how do UBC students find jobs and internship opportunities? So you're currently working for me through the work learn program maybe you want to mention a bit about that um and then we can talk a little bit about co-op uh once you're done sharing more 
Okay, so uh, thank you, Erin. So for on-campus jobs at UBC, I work at, under the UBC Work Loan Program as a content creator for Engineering Stories, which is Erin is my supervisor. So I think uh, for me as a second year student uh, uh, coming from first year, the same way you guys will. I think uh, searching for on uh, Instagram really helps me to search through what what I want to work at. So I think for job opportunities, uh, Careers Online is the place where you most people look for jobs for on-campus jobs and Workland is one of those. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for Workland. Yeah, so work learn at the Vancouver campus allows you to work up to 10 hours a week in a professional setting. Um, so that's something that you can do during the school year. Um, Sienna, do you, have you had any jobs as well that you want to talk about? Um, I haven't had any jobs, but okay. for next semester, there's something called being a note taker for your courses, which I'm going to do as long as they want me <laughs> if I want to apply. But um, it's really cool. You kind of just have to do your notes in a slightly specific way, and then you get to upload them and you kind of you get a little bit of reimbursement for that work that you're doing in class. So I'm looking into doing that. And I know there's also a job board that you can do. One of my friends actually works for gearing up throughout the year on the Okanagan campus, and he finds it really manageable with his engineering degree and he's taking a whole course load. Awesome. So those are both um, opportunities that you can do while you're in classes. But I do want to mention the co-op program that we have at both campuses. So sometimes in uh, especially U.S. schools, you may hear that as an internship uh, at UBC Engineering. Both campuses offer co-op. It's actually the same co-op office across both campuses. So it's the same opportunities available to both sets of students. And that allows you to do up to 20 months of paid work experience as part of your degree in an engineering job. So that typically is going to add a year to your degree, um, but that work experience can apply up to a year's worth towards your EIT work or your engineering training work requirements that you need before becoming a professional engineer. So you're not necessarily behind, um, even though you've spent more time in school. Those jobs also pay very well. So you can make quite a bit of money during your co-op terms to pay for school, to pay for your living expenses and things like that. As I mentioned throughout the presentation, you can apply into co-op at the start of your second or third year. And then the co-op team will help walk you through the rest of the process. So once you're accepted into the co-op program, you have a co-op advisor that helps you throughout the whole process. You apply to jobs, things like that. Um, John V mentioned that she's part of the Engineering Stories team. And so if you do check out Engineering Stories on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, there are a few videos on there about being a co-op student and what co-op kind of looks like. So do check those out because that's a great option. And um, there's also a few of our ambassadors that I had mentioned our UBC engineering ambassadors that are in the co-op program as well. So if you do want to learn more, they would be a great person to talk to. Um, a question about what are the competitive engineering programs at UBC Vancouver? So as Kyle mentioned before, um, basically it's a competitive ranking process for all of our second year placement programs. Typically the most competitive programs for the last few years have been engineering physics, mechanical engineering and computer engineering. Um, but in your first year, part of the advantage of our foundational first year is that you get to learn about all of those programs. You get to hear from current students. You get to hear from professors, advisors, and you really get to make a good decision based on kind of like how competitive is that program? Is that program what you really want? All of those sorts of pieces. The other thing you get to learn even more in depth about is really thinking to the future of what field of engineering do you want to work in? So not necessarily what type of engineer do you want to be, but what do you want to be working in as an engineer? Because there are multiple programs that will all lead towards very similar jobs, maybe even the same job, um, and definitely in the same field of work. So for example, you could look at if you wanted to work in the field of biomedical engineering, we have the biomedical engineering program at the Vancouver campus. We have a biomechanics option within mechanical engineering. We have a biomedical option within electrical engineering. Um, and then we have at the Okanagan campus, you can do mechanical or electrical engineering with the biomedical option as well. So that's like so many programs right there that can all lead towards biomedical engineering. So we just want you to kind of consider all of those options for you as well. Um, 
Sienna, there is a question about, um, you mentioned AP courses were helpful in uh, getting through your first year. Um, do Would you personally advise going through the experience of AP courses, like generally taking all of those courses, or are there specific AP courses that you found most useful? Um, yeah, I took AP English, I took AP Physics, I took AP Calculus, and I took AP Chemistry. And out of those, the ones that I found most beneficial were definitely AP Calculus, just because my first semester calculus course that I was taking was basically a review for me. There's only a couple of topics I hadn't covered before, which kind of let me focus on my other courses. And then also AP Chemistry helped me in my first year courses a whole bunch because I was super familiar with a lot of the content that we covered as well. Um, I found that AP Physics was less beneficial. I know that there's a couple different types of AP Physics. I don't remember which one I took, unfortunately, but the one that I did take, I didn't find really helped me with the content that we covered. It, the content that I covered in my first year physics kind of focus courses was very different than anything I'd ever seen. So, and then AP English, um, I didn't take the exam for that. So I didn't have like the benefit of not having to take um, first year English because I'd gotten a desirable score on that. Um, but I know that is an option sometimes for AP courses. If you get certain scores on the AP exams, you can do certain things with different courses, but that's for advisors. <laughs> awesome. Um, the next question is, uh, who can post-secondary students, or I'm going to say any students that have more questions about transferring or applying to UBC engineering contacts. So again, that would be myself or Kyle. So if you have questions specifically about the Okanagan campus, definitely reach out to Kyle. If you have questions specifically about the Vancouver campus, you can reach out to me. We'll help you through that as best we can. Specifically for this question about unassigned credit, there may not be anything that we can do at this point until UBC admissions has fully assessed you, but you can definitely send us an email and we can see um, or at least help you as best we can. Um, a little bit away from UBC engineering, but uh, there's a question about uh, the soccer team. How does getting on a varsity team work is basically the question. Do you have to go to trials? Do you reach out to the coach in advance? What does that all look like, Sienna? Um, most of the time, it's something that you're doing throughout high school. So I started the recruiting process for university soccer at the end of my grade 10 year. And some people start earlier, some people start later. I know that there are opportunities once you get to university to try out for certain teams, but that's definitely like, depending on the team, like it's very different for different teams. I know for the men's soccer team here on the Okanagan campus, we have lots of players who have come and contacted the coach, asked to try out, and then continue to be on the team after that. But for the most part, that sort of process ha happens before you come to the university. And um, most of the time you do reach out to the coach or the coaching staff, assistant coach. Um, I believe on the UBCO Athletics website, there is a recruitment for varsity athletics little page on there and you can fill that out and kind of find more contact information but if you're interested in those sorts of things definitely kind of reach out to more athletic department related people but it normally happens during high school yeah and there's the same sort of link on the vancouver campus as well so you can check out either the heat or the thunderbirds website uh, to find out more about each of those teams and everything um, John V, have you done any sort of like uh, recreation sports or anything like that at the Vancouver campus that you can talk about? So not varsity related, but ways to get involved with recreation? Yeah, so there are gym memberships that, that are $40 per semester for students. So a lot of my friends go to the gym, so they have that for recreation and sort of just to have relaxed during that time. And I think um, I kind of go to the drop-in sessions for badminton because I like badminton. So I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of the under, under the recreation side for UBC Vancouver, there are options for drop-in sessions. They're mostly normal. They're not that competitive. They're not varsity level. They're just normal players who just go around and just play badminton or soccer or basketball. A lot of people do that. And I think... You, they are free for UBC students and you just have to give them your UBC student card. So that's a really good option. I really like playing drop-in 
badminton for yeah awesome thanks there was a question about what scholarships are there as well so i did add a link into the chat of the scholarships for canadian students and for international students but I also want to highlight that there's tons of external scholarships out there. So do some searches online about scholarships for just generally going into university. Um, I would also search scholarships for tech, scholarships for engineering, scholarships for STEM. So all of those would be related to engineering. For any uh, women here today, if you search women in engineering, women in STEM, women in tech, that's also a good kind of source uh, to find scholarships that would be relevant to you as well that you can find. There are so many scholarships out there. There's lots of money that goes unclaimed every year. So we always encourage you to get that free money while you can. Part of the reason we're hosting this session today is that the first round offer deadline is December 1st. So if you are applying by December 1st, that means you can be considered for some of our scholarships. Uh, so do make sure that on the application, you are indicating that you would like to be considered for the Presidential Scholars Award. Uh, we also have some additional scholarships with UBC. There's the Centennial Scholars Award and the F uh, Future Leaders Award for, or sorry, Leaders of Tomorrow Award. Uh, for uh, students who are in need of financial assistance. So make sure that you're also applying for any of those awards that you uh, may need through UBC. So again, check out those links for more details there. Um, there's a couple questions. Do you have to take an English course in first year? Yes, both campuses, you have to take uh, an English course as part of your degree requirements. Um, is there a minimum GPA you must maintain after your first year in order to move forward in engineering and choose your program? So yes, there is a minimum GPA that we are looking for students to meet. Um, typically, that just means that you're passing. So we're looking, there's a few different kind of things and advisors can kind of help you with this. Generally, if you're above a 60% after first year, that means that you're in good standing. So you'd be able to move into second year. Uh, if you're between a 50 and a 60% after first year, you'll probably have a discussion with an advisor, though, to make sure that you are going to be successful in your upcoming year. So that's kind of the cutoffs that we're looking for. It's not a significant GPA that you need to meet. Um, and there's a handful of students that would be in that kind of category of uh, not successfully completing first year. But again, Kyle mentioned some of this already that there's tons of resources available to students to make sure that you are successful in first year. So there's like free tutoring offered. There's lots of ways to kind of get that support that you may need uh, to make sure that you are successful in your first year. So as long as you're taking advantage of some of those, you should be, uh, you know, being supported and talk to your advisors too, because your advisors can help you out throughout the year um, and can make sure that you are successful in first year. We want everyone to be successful. We don't want anyone to not be succeeding and to not be moving into the next year. So um, that's a great question though. Um, all right, moving through. So again, we are running out of time. If you do have any questions that weren't answered today, um, then definitely do send an email to Kyle or myself. Um, there is a question about what is the gender ratio like at UBC Engineering and is it improving compared to previous years? So yes, one of the things that UBC Engineering really focuses on is getting more women and other underrepresented populations into engineering. The main reason that we want to do that is because engineers are working to make our world a better place. We wanna make sure that those teams of engineers working in the industry are going to be representative of the entire world's population and not just part of it. So to us, that is really important to get more underrepresented populations into engineering. The gender uh, or the uh, sorry, admission process is gender blind. So there is not anything that we're looking at where just because you're a girl or just because you represent a certain group that you may be admitted. That's not something that we are specifically looking at within it. Uh, UBC engineering, uh, that's where the holistic process comes into. So we're looking at your grades, we're looking at your personal profile, we're looking at all those pieces. Having said that, the incoming first year 
classes uh, at the Vancouver campus is about 30% women. Um, and that has been increasing fairly steadily uh, over the last several years. And we're working to get that as close to 50% as possible so that we can represent the full uh, population. Kyle, do you know what the numbers are at the Okanagan campus? Yeah, we are comparable, right, right around the same, around 30%. Perfect. And something that has been growing and a big part of that is thanks to our friends at Gearing Up and all of these grassroots STEM programs that are just exposing um, STEM to multiple groups and to, to young women as well. So we're just looking to increase that interest in engineering and let everyone know that engineering welcomes everyone. There is a place for you to find your own your own place here and uh, looking to just increase the, the sense of welcome to all students that are applying to increase those applicant numbers. But again, the admissions is yeah, gender, gender blind and, and group blind. They, they do not consider that at all. Um, but they are, of course, looking at uh, grades and personal profile. But the more women we can interest in engineering and STEM, um, STEM topics is just awesome, I think, for our program and all programs to, to be out there. How have you found juggling that ratio, Genvi, on, uh, you know, on your first year on campus and then extending beyond that? How have you found that being potentially that minority as a woman in engineering in that 30 percentile versus Seventy percent of of men out there. Um, I think for me, as a part of women in engineering, um, I think women are getting more into engineering and STEM, and it's really empowering to see a lot of my friends all together. We just work together and just study, and I think that ratio it might change and it will change in the future. But just looking at Oh, the way even the even the boys in the classes they are really respectful in that sense too and I think uh, a lot of people there are a lot of women in design teams there are a lot of clubs that represent women as well so coming from um, India and moving to Canada I see a lot of separation I see a lot of improvement and I think I really like studying at UBC Vancouver just because it is really open to every community to every gender to everyone who just stays here at UBC. It's really open and it's a really good place to be at. Yeah. Thank you, Genevieve. These are really great questions that are coming through. Again, if you have some questions, please feel free to be putting them in the chat, but you can also be staying connected with myself, Aaron, or reaching out to UBC engineering offices directly on the Vancouver campus. There are Vancouver UBC engineering advisors, as well as on the Okanagan campus. There's even virtual drop-ins through the same Zoom platform here. You can be popping in with quick questions to be asking engineering advisors. Those aren't going to be admission specific stuff, but related to our programs, our courses, the student experiences throughout throughout engineering. Thanks, Aaron. We've got our, our emails in the chat here. Please do not hesitate to, to be reaching out. Um, we did have a really good question come through related to getting involved and how do you choose between all of the different things that are out there, if it's clubs or sports or um, extracurriculars. Sienna, when you first made that transition to UBC, how did you choose how to allocate your time between the academic rigor and athletics and then getting involved in all the other clubs on, on top of that? Um, for me, I kind of went through the first couple of weeks of school. I'd go to like the meetings for different clubs and opportunities that are on campus. And I was just maintained this, like awareness of like what they were. And I also at those meetings kind of found out how big of a time commitment they were because obviously there's only so many hours in a day like you can't do everything unfortunately it'd be great if you could but you can and so then as I kind of started going through my first semester at university I started figuring out how much free time I really have to commit to these other things and then in second semester is when I kind of became a lot more involved in all these different clubs because I kind of had an idea of what I was able to manage and still maintain good grades and still have time to do all the soccer soccer varsity team related things and so I think my first semester was kind of just like me finding out what works best for me and how much time I have and then second semester is when I kind of became a lot more involved. 
Thanks, Sienna. It's such an exciting journey that each of you have ahead of you as you're finishing up your high school or maybe you're finishing up post-secondary courses or you've been working and you're looking to apply to come back to university. This is really an exciting time for you. And if you've made up your mind on engineering or maybe you haven't yet, or you've made up your mind on a campus or maybe you haven't yet, the nice part about UBC's application is we do have the ability to put two choices down on there. But as you consider your next steps and your future at UBC and, and beyond, really try to put yourself in the shoes of Sienna and Genevieve as current students in our program. We have campus tours that are available on both campuses. This is a really, really great resource. If you have the, the time and the means to travel to campus and step foot on campus, physically put yourself in the shoes of a current student, that can be a huge help as you're weighing your, your options and, and decision making for next steps moving forward. But uh, I just want to congratulate each of you on all of your accomplishments thus far. I wish you very, very good luck through the remainder of your courses this year or all your endeavors this year as you're applying. But please know if you have questions, be it for our engineering stories team students or Aaron or myself or anyone from UBC Engineering or UBC Admissions or whomever it may be, please do not hesitate to be reaching out. That's that's why we're here. We're here to help. Sienna and Genevieve have a job to do. They are primarily doing their degree first, but yes, Aaron and I, we're here to be to be helping you through this, this journey and um, navigating that application or transfer credit assessments or whatever it may be. Just please don't hesitate to be reaching out. Awesome. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for attending. Um, just a couple of last questions that came in and just to clarify before we leave today. So if you are wanting to be considered for our first round offer of admission, please do apply by December 1st at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. So depending on where you are in the world, double check what that is in Pacific time. Uh, and the final deadline, though, is January 15th. So if you do miss the December 1st, you may not be able to be considered for scholarships, but you can still apply up until January 15th. And then just to clarify that your documents are not due at the time of applying. You are applying and giving us all your information. Your documents will be due later. And that will all be communicated to you by UBC um, directly via email. So apply by December 1st uh, if you can. Get it out of the way. You can enjoy your winter break later on. Uh, apply by December 1st if you can. Do take some time to, to spend as much time on your personal profile as you can before submitting that application, but hopefully you've already started that and this has answered the rest of the questions that you need to kind of finish everything. Um, but thank you so much to our two students for joining us today. Thank you to Kyle for being here to help represent the Okanagan campus. And thank you to all of the attendees that came today to get your questions answered. Hopefully this has helped give you lots more information about UBC Engineering. Again, Kyle mentioned some ways you can reach out to us, uh, but that's it for tonight. Hopefully that helped. I hope to see many of you on our campuses in the coming September. Until then, please do reach out if you have any other questions tonight. So thank you everyone and have a great evening.